We've built our own lithium ion battery pack and today you will learn how it compares to flying with the LiPo battery. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Felix here with Quadcopter Guide and on this channel I help you get the most out of your drones and other camera gear. Today we're going to take this bad boy outside. If you haven't seen my last video, you can check that out up here. In that video I go through how I built this lithium ion based battery pack and I did that for my 7 inch DJI FPV powered cinematic FPV drone, if you want to call it that. The gist of this whole exercise is that the lithium ion battery pack, which we built in the last video, would provide us with some advantages that would make this whole effort worthwhile. Lithium ion battery packs, if you recall, don't offer that explosive high discharge rate of normal LiPo batteries, as long as those LiPos are made of quality cells, of course. These lithium ion cells, which we used here to make this pack in the last video, are rated at 30 amps. So I'm hoping that at a cruise speed, which should be around 18 amps, 15 to 18 amps on this drone, that this would be plenty to get those kind of smooth, just flying recordings on the GoPro. Of course, I plan on making a second one of these to run them in parallel. That would get me 60 amps of max discharge. And with that, I've got a little bit more of a safety zone and a leeway if it comes to doing quick acceleration to come out of a, not really a dive, but let's just say a, a downward movement with the drone. The lithium ion battery pack, which we built, we used 3000 milliamp hour cells and they were rated at maximum 30 amps. We're gonna compare that to this LiPo battery pack, which is rated at 2200 milliamp hours and a discharge rate of 154 amps. So you can see this has a much higher discharge rate, but we get 3000 milliamp hours out of this pack and this one only has 2200. And guess which one's lighter? this one so that'll be very interesting to see how these two compare in the test outside when we get outside in a little bit all right so we're not really comparing apples to apples lithium polymer battery packs shouldn't get discharged below 3.5 volts per cell you want to do that to get any kind of longevity out of your pack you might be able to drop below that but if you do there's a high risk of one of the cells or multiple cells not coming back to normal voltage in which case your battery pack is just toast. Lithium ion batteries, however, can be discharged to a much lower voltage per cell. The industry standard is kind of a minimum of 2.5 volts per cell. Um, to play it safe, I'm gonna go to 2.65 so I can get a little bit more of a longevity out of the packs. It's nice to know that you can get down to 2.5 and I'm sure you can go a little bit lower, but once again, once you hit that certain minimum, there's just no going back. And at that point, the voltage just drops really fast. So you're not gonna get that much more flight time out of the cells. So in my test, which we're gonna get to in just a second here, we're gonna run the LiPo pack to 21 volts total. And the lithium ion pack, we're gonna run to 15.9 volts. That is 3.5 volts per cell on the LiPo pack and 2.65 volts per cell on the lithium ion pack. Now note that the battery cells do come up in voltage just a little bit once they rest and they're no longer under load, but I just don't wanna get below those thresholds, which we talked about, just to make sure that these packs do last a little bit. If you don't discharge packs as low as 80%, you can get a lot more cycles out of them, but these lithium ion cells, for example, at 80% are rated for at least 500 cycles. So 500 cycles for a battery, that's fair enough for me. And I get a lot of flight time out of it, I hope. All right, to the test. Now I wanted to make this test halfway scientific, so I thought, how could we get two flights to be as similar as possible? I didn't trust myself to get a perfectly same discharge of both battery packs in full forward flight or just forward flight. It's just too many variables. So I thought, hey, let's do a hover test. I think that's close enough for the two packs that we can compare the data later on. And so hover test it is. Not as much fun, but anything for science. All right, so let's get out to the field and see how this lithium ion pack compares to the LiPo. All right, so we're gonna test the LiPo battery first and I've got my landing pad here on the left. We're gonna take off from there and just kind of hover around and see how long it takes for us to get to the magical voltage threshold. On my remote, I can see the voltage of the battery pack on the drone. So I'm gonna use that as an indicator of when it's time to land. All right, so not bad. The LiPo battery got a hover time of 13 minutes and four seconds. All right, so for the LiPo battery, I actually didn't get all the way down to 21 volts total. On the remote, I can also see how many milliamp hours have been taken out of the battery pack. And we were at 1896 milliamp hours indicated. That is 86% of the capacity of the battery pack. So I didn't really want to push it any further, but still a respectable time of 13 minutes and four seconds. After a short rest, the battery pack came up to 22.35 volts. That is a resting voltage of 3.75 volts per cell. So I could go probably a little bit lower, 
but 80% uh, of the 2200 milliamp hours that the battery is rated for is only 1760 and we pulled out 1896. So I guess you could pull a little bit more out of it, but once again, I want these batteries to last, so I think that's fair. All right, lithium ion battery is next. And as you can see here, similar test. A couple times I went under the drone just to blow the bugs off me. I got eaten alive by the mosquitoes out there, but hey, anything for the test. Extracted 2,876 milliamp hours indicated. That is roughly 92 to 95% of the capacity, depending on what you go with. Some stores say that this is a 3,000 milliamp hour battery cell and others indicate 3130. So anywhere around 92 to 95%. Anyhow, a very respectable time of 20 minutes flight time out of this battery. The voltage dropped to 15.9 at the end and then I landed. And I have to say that the voltage does drop relatively quickly at the end. So just know that at the beginning for every 0.3 volts drop of the battery pack, you do not get the same amount of flight time as at the, for that same 0.3 volt drop at the end. Just be careful of that. So the resting voltage after the battery had cooled was 18.44 volts. That is a resting voltage of 3.07 volts per cell. All right, so just know that 80% of even the 3130 or 3120 capacity, if they are really rated to that, is 2496. And we got 2876 milliamp hours out of this battery. So we did go a little bit further on this 80% rule. And of course, you don't really wanna discharge more than 80% out of any battery pack if you want the batteries to last. But once again, it's nice to know that in an emergency, you have a little bit of a reserve left. Just know that that reserve fades very fast. Hey, if this video helped you out or if you learned something new, then please do give it a like. It really does help out the channel. And of course, for more, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know down in the comments below. It doesn't matter if you fly a camera drone or FPV drone. Would you take a reduction in maximum performance for let's say a 30, 35% longer flight time? Let me know down below and let's get into a good conversation together. In the meantime, check out some of these other videos. This one's pretty good, but you should check out that one. See you next time.